Ministry of Defense 2020 Year in Review. As Japan's security environment is changing at an extremely rapid pace, security challenges that cannot be dealt with by a single country alone have been emerging. Examples are securing the stable use of new domains such as space and cyberspace, security of sea lanes, response to the proliferation of weapons of mass destruction, and international terrorism. Let's look back on the activities of the MOD SDF in 2020, where we operated while responding to the COVID 19 pandemic. We are facing an unprecedented situation where the global number of infected cases and deaths caused by the novel coronavirus have risen above 80 million and 1.7 million, respectively, by DEC. Even in Japan, more than 200,000 people have been infected. As a result, the Japanese government declared a state of emergency from April 7 to May 25. In this emergency, the MOD SDF provided a series of assistance from January 31, 2020, including basic assistance at accommodation facilities and assistance on the cruise ship Diamond Princess. We have also provided quarantine assistance, transportation, and other basic assistance for returning Japanese nationals, as well as training for local governments and private companies. The STF has never experienced a response to such a large scale infectious disease but was able to respond to the outbreak adequately based on education and training to protect from biological chemical agents. Consequently, missions were accomplished with zero infections from STF deployed personnel. To prevent the spread of COVID 19, the MOD STF set up a special page on the MOD website, etc., and disclosed infection control measures. We also shared the information, lessons, and knowledge obtained from our experience to control the COVID 19 infections with foreign governments through our defense attaches assigned to countries around the world and embassies in Tokyo, for example. In 2020, the MOD had ministerial telephone conversations or video teleconferences with 24 countries and one international organization. The SDF was engaged in persistent information gathering and warning and surveillance during peacetime over the sea and airspace surrounding Japan so that it can respond to various contingencies immediately and seamlessly. SDF carries out information gathering some vessels suspected of violating the U1 Security Council resolution in the seas surrounding Japan. During 2018 to the end of December 2020, the SDF confirmed and disclosed 24 cases that were strongly suspected to conduct so called ship to ship transfers by North Korean vessels. SDF detects and identifies aircraft flying in airspace surrounding Japan using warning and control radars as well as early warning and control aircraft. If any suspicious aircraft heading to Japan's territorial airspace are detected, fighters and other aircraft scramble to approach them so as to confirm the situation and monitor the aircraft as necessary. In February, A Suhoi 34 fighter bomber was confirmed for the first time above the sea of a host in a scramble. In response to an attack on Japan, including its remote islands, the SDF will quickly maneuver and deploy requisite units to block access and landing of invading forces while ensuring maritime and air superiority. To strengthen its defense architecture in the southwestern region, a surface to air missile unit and a surface to ship guided missile unit were deployed to Miyakojima Island in March. The STF also will deploy an area security unit in charge of the initial response and other units in Ishigaki Island. As part of measures to enhance the persistent ISR posture, the STF established Airborne Warning and Control Wing by upgrading the Airborne Early Warning Group in March. Also, to secure capabilities for swift and large scale transportation and deployment of units, the MOD established a Transportation Aviation Group that operates Ospreys in March. 
the GSDF procured Ospreys from the United States and conducted the first flight in Japan in November. Considering the situation surrounding Japan, the ballistic missile defense system needs to ensure constant and sustained protection against ballistic missile attacks for a long period of over one year. The MLD proceeded the plan to introduce two Aegis Ashore units since December 2017. However, as a result of continued discussions with the U.S. side and following studies, it became clear that a drastic upgrade of the entire system will become necessary to control the flyout trajectories of the interceptor to safely drop the booster within the maneuver area or into the sea. Given this finding, the MLD concluded that it was not reasonable to invest additional cost and time and that it became unable to deliver on commitments to the local people. For that reason, the MLD decided to suspend the process related to the deployment of the Aegis Ashore in June 2020. A cabinet decision was made in December to procure two Aegis system equipped vessels instead of land-based Aegis system and to develop a new standoff missile to enhance our standoff defense capability. Based on the cabinet decision, the MOD will continue to steadily strengthen our defense capability in order to protect our citizens' lives and defend their peaceful living. The MOD SDF, on a steady state basis, conducts persistent monitoring as well as gathering and analysis of relevant information in space cyberspace and electromagnetic domains. In the event of any actions that impede its activities in these domains, the MLD SDF will promptly identify incidents and take such measures as damage limitation and recovery. The MLD aims to establish a Space Situational Awareness SSA system by the end of March 2023. In preparation for full-scale SSA operation and introduction of defense equipment, the SDF established a Space Operations Squadron in May. Regarding the cyber domain, the MLD SDF has engaged in holistic measures, including ensuring the safety of information and communication systems in response to cyber attacks by specialist units. The Cyber Defense Group will be further expanded by about 70 personnel to approximately 290 by the end of March 2021. In the electromagnetic domain, the ASDF deployed an RC-2 electronic warfare aircraft. RC-2 is an asset essential to ensure superiority in the electromagnetic domain and to realize cross-domain operations. When natural disasters, such as heavy rain, occurs, the SDF engages in various activities in cooperation with local governments. After the heavy rain from early July, the governors of Kumamoto, Fukuoka, Oita, and Yamagata prefectures requested GSDF units for disaster relief. In response, the GSDF implemented disaster relief activities for rescue and living assistance. In this disaster relief operation, an operation order was issued to call up to 400 SDF Ready Reserve personnel and up to 100 SDF Reserve personnel to engage in field activities. In response to the request by the governors and others, the SDF carried out disaster relief operations in 33 prefectures to prevent the community spread of the COVID-19 infection. In this disaster relief mission, the SDF carried out operations such as infection prevention training for local government staff on wearing protective clothing, meal distribution and other basic assistance for patients staying at accommodation facilities, transportation of patients from hospitals to accommodation facilities, and airlifting of COVID-19 positive patients from remote islands. The Japan-U.S. security arrangements based on the Japan-U.S. Security Treaty, which marked the 60th anniversary in 2020, constitute a cornerstone for Japan's national security together with Japan's own national defense architecture. Even in the midst of expanding COVID-19 pandemic, 
We have conducted bilateral exercises to strengthen Japan-U.S. cooperation. Japan-U.S. bilateral field joint training exercise KeenSOR 21 was carried out from October to November in 2020. The KeenSOR exercise is one of the largest field training exercises with the participation of about 37,000 SDF personnel and about 9,000 from U.S. Force. In addition to amphibious, ground, maritime and air operations, the exercise included training in new domains such as space situation awareness, response to cyber attacks and electronic warfare. To mitigate the impact on Okinawa, an initiative was implemented to relocate the training activities of MV-22 Ospreys that are stationed at Futama Air Station during the exercise. Japan and the United States constantly conduct bilateral training in various waters and airspace. In August, the MSDF destroyer JS Ikazuchi and U.S. aircraft carrier USS Ronald Reagan conducted Japan-U.S. bilateral training in the waters and airspace to the south of Okinawa, and the ASDF conducted a variety of training with U.S. Air Force strategic bomber B-1 Lancers in the airspace over the Sea of Japan and the East China Sea. In June, F-35A from the ASDF 302nd Squadron participated in the formation of the runway known as Elephant Walk, which was executed by the 35th Fighter Wing of the U.S. Air Force at Misawa Air Base. The two countries confirmed the strong Japan-U.S. alliance and the friendly relationship between ASDF Japan and U.S. Air Forces at Misawa Air Base. Further enhancement of the deterrence and response capabilities of the Japan-U.S. alliance through the series of bilateral training demonstrates the two countries' determination and capability for stabilizing the region. It has become important to promote bilateral and multilateral defense cooperation and exchanges in multifaceted and multi-layered ways to create a desirable security environment. In February, the then Minister of Defense Kono visited Germany to attend the 56th Munich Security Conference. He held the first defense ministerial meeting with Ukraine's defense minister, as well as bilateral meetings with the defense ministers of Canada, France, and Germany, and also had talks with the High Representative of the EU and Secretary General of NATO, where they exchanged views on defense cooperations and exchanges and regional situations. In December, Defense Minister Kishi attended the 7th ASEAN Defense Ministers Meeting Plus, also known as ADMM Plus, held via a video teleconference and shared Japan's positions and views. The minister also attended the ceremony for the 10th anniversary of the founding of the ADMM Plus and delivered a speech on behalf of ADMM Plus countries. ADMM Plus is only government-hosted, defense minister-level international conference in the Indo-Pacific region, which the MOD SDF has been committed to. Ministers exchanged views on regional and international security environment and adopted the Joint Declaration on Strategic Security Vision of ADMM Plus. On the same day, Defense Minister Kishi attended the ASEAN-Japan Defense Minister's informal meeting to exchange views on practical defense cooperations with defense ministers of ASEAN member states and announced a new project, the Japan ASEAN Cybersecurity Training Program for Defense Authorities. The SDF participated in the multilateral exercise COBRA Goal 20 from January to March. In the 16th iteration of Exercise Cobra Gold, new training programs such as response to cyber attacks and parachute training were conducted. In November, the MSDF conducted the Japan-US-India-Australia Multilateral Naval Exercise Malabar 2020 in two phases. Australia participated in Malabar for the first time in 13 years since 2007. The exercise not only improved the tactical skills of the MSDF, but also produced significant results in naval service-to-service -service collaboration among the four countries.
The deepening of cooperation and exchanges will contribute to maintaining and enhancing the free and open Indo-Pacific and thereby to the peace and stability of the region. The MOD SDF conducts capacity building with various countries in the fields of security and defense. The initiatives in FY2020 include the following. Under a capacity building program, 21 commanders and civil engineering machine operators of Lao People's Army were invited to Japan in February and received education on road restoration, disaster recovery, and other activities at the GSDF Engineer School. Through the invitation program, the MOD SDF ensured strengthening Japan Lao's cooperation in the fields of humanitarian aid and disaster response. Also in February, eight Indonesian National Armed Forces or TNI officers were invited to Japan to attend capacity building program including observing the Northeastern Army Headquarters and Japan-US bilateral HADR exercise. Two officials of the Indonesian National Disaster Management Agency or BNPB who were invited by JICA also participated in the program. Through the invitation, the MOD SDF deepened the participants' understanding of the SDF's activities to enhance its ability to respond to disasters. In addition to these efforts, the capacity building projects using the knowledge and experience of the SDF not only strengthen friendly relations with partner countries, but also create a desirable security environment for Japan by enabling the recipient country's forces to undertake a different role in maintaining international peace and regional stability. Since April 2019, Japan has been dispatching staff officers to the headquarters of the Multinational Force and Observers a MESO in the Sinai Peninsula at the first international coordinated operations for peace and security. Currently, two staff officers are carrying out their duties such as supporting the promotion of dialogue and confidence building between Egypt and Israel concerning ceasefire monitoring activities. Since November 2011, Japan has been dispatching staff officers to the headquarters of the United Nations Mission in the Republic of South Sudan, UNMIS. Currently, four staff officers are carrying out their duties, such as planning and coordinating each of tasks including logistics, database, engineering, and air operation. Sending staff officers to UNMIS is one of the tangible examples to practice proactive contribution to peace with Japan. Under the banner of proactive contribution to peace, Japan will continue to make further active contribution in the field of international peace cooperation, including enhancing capacity building and dispatching units and personnel while leveraging Japan's strengths based on the experiences so far. To secure revenue, the MOD conducted its first ever defense auction in July. The 29 items came up for the auction included a canteen and other GSDF personal equipment, the steering wheel of the decommissioned training ship Yamayuki, an ASDF pilot helmet, and a control stick of transport aircraft. How did you like the video? The MLG SDF will continue a broad range of activities for the defense of Japan and international peace to protect the life and properties of Japanese nationals and to defend their peaceful lives.